Everybody. <laughs> That's right. Hello. Hello. And welcome to Capitol Studios. I'm Roe Hershkovitz, joined by Paula Salvatore. Nice to have you here today. Welcome to Capitol, the most COVID compliant studio in Los Angeles or possibly the world. As you can tell, we're masked up, air filters are going, keeping everybody safe. But we're glad to have you here. And before we jump in, I also wanted to point out that. Today's a very special day for us here at the studio because our very own Paula Salvatore is celebrating. Oh dear, 30 years here. <laughs> her, her 30th anniversary yes. here at Capitol Studios, yeah. which is really yeah. remarkable. And uh, you know, I owe it all to people like you and the many people that have come through the place, the musicians, the artists, the staff. One thing I could say is um, musicians, they, they always come back and they never grow old. Well, that's right. <laughs> never. And you were telling me just before about your first time coming down to Capitol for your interview. Yes. They asked me to come over and see the room, and uh, I almost ran out because it was so pristine and gorgeous. It was 1990, and it was so different from what I was used to at Sound City. It was very right. clean. didn't seem a lot of dirty rock and roll, so it got me really worried. Um, you know, I was a little hesitant about it, you know, and I finally gave in, which was a smart thing. Right. You know. <laughs> and you were coming from Sound City, also yeah. a very well-regarded studio in the Valley, yeah. but, but a bit of a different vibe. But a different vibe. nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And, and that's what I was worried about. Where's the... And that's what they said, you know, we want you here. We need a vibe. And so, you know, that's what grew from everything. But I looked forward into the booking book and I saw Paul McCartney interviews and I realized he would be coming in, which changed everything. And um, it was so nice. He was, it was so wonderful and gallant and the first thing he said to me was may I see the console because I just got one from my studio so we showed him our new VR so that's how it started he's so polite <laughs> yes <laughs> and speaking of, and so speaking of Paul and consoles this new went in in 2012 yes. right uh -huh. and what was the first session that ended up happening yeah here? We just by the skin of our teeth got it done with Art Kelm and the wonderful tech team and they were doing a live iTunes live kisses with Paul McCartney um, with the audience, a performance. It was like a two-hour performance. Yeah. He won a Grammy for Best Video, and he had people intermingled in the studio with Diana Krall, uh, Joe Walsh, and uh, John Burke. And so all that hullabaloo on Jeff the Hamilton. first session, on, and it was still being <laughs> wired up the day the that the session was happening. Yeah, the, the day before. So before we head out of the Studio A control room and into the live room of Studio A, yeah. It's worth noting that there was a renovation in the late 80s that happened here, and this room was built out. Right. This room was finished in 1990, and um, they made an extra large control room, as you see, and they made ISO boots, but they took away the space of the recording room that was originally designed in the 50s. So we should go out and get a feel for that recording room. Let's do that. Out of the control room of Studio A and into the legendary Studio A live room. Oh, the lovely Steinway Nat King Cole piano. That's right. So uh, as Paula pointed out, this Steinway is especially significant and highly in demand and used quite a lot. We have two in-house pianos, a very large uh, nine-foot Yamaha, and this Steinway, which of course is notable because it was used by none other than... Nakinko. There's a few things lying around these studios that still get used, and, and we'll show you a couple more, but are really notable and are just a part of our history and why folks want to come and work here. For me, walking into this room now, it's really something special because I grew up on a lot of Sinatra. And there are all these great pictures of him from when I was a kid, of him conducting or working in this room. And I think he was standing right here 
with the orchestra behind him yeah. and that big mic hanging over the top. Well, funny you should say that in 93, he was standing there when he did the duets record with Phil Ramone. It was the first time he was at Capitol since 1960. He was a little apprehensive about it, but he actually wanted to be out in the room with the players just like he was. So we had to put him near his piano player and with a handheld mic. That's right. And he was standing right there, right where you were. <laughs> I heard about that. Uh, initially, the plan was to have Frank in an ISO booth. We, we, he wanted to be with the band, but that we knew there would be bleed. Right. So Phil had um, those nice um, gobos built, and we had actually a roof and a door. And he said, I'm not getting in that thing, and left. He left the orchestra high and dry. But he came back. Thank God. <laughs> they convinced him. That was one of the highlights of, of my life. And I think there was another highlight, if I'm not mistaken, between you and Frank in the hallway, right? <laughs> Do you want to tell the folks? Really? I mean, it's up to you. We can always edit it out. Yeah. yeah. But uh, you, and, you and Frank ended up having an exchange that day, right? Yeah, we had a few exchanges. Uh, I could tell this really fast now, but uh, when he came in, there was an edict across the land to not approach Mr. Sinatra, not take a pitch, and not talk to him. Sure. So it was very hard not to do that. You know, I, it was to see him here. So Hank brought me over, and he said, this is Paula. And I said, I'm Paula Salvatore. I didn't get to tell you that. And he goes, I know, I won't forget that face. And he kissed me right on the lips. It's amazing. That's right. Those halls. If those halls could talk. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I can't imagine. Anyway, so. We don't all have kissing Frank Sinatra stories, <laughs> I think, is the takeaway here, you know? So some of the work that's been done in here, I mean, we were just talking about it. I mean, we had some orchestras in here very recently with uh, Ariana Grande, Carrie Underwood, Daft Punk uh, uh, famously recorded strings in here for Random Access Memories. Right. Migos has worked yeah. in here. Yeah. Uh, the movie Ray filmed in here. All kinds of TV shows and movies also want to yeah. come in here. We did because a video for Justin Timberlake and Jay-Z, Suit and Tie. Suit and Tie is a great yeah. one. I mean, there is something inherently classy about the space, the rooms, the architecture, and that includes the sound of the room itself. Right. Got Notable that. also because of these panels on the walls, which can affect the sound and the, and the delay times in the room. So you might come in one day and it looks like this, where the fabric against the back wall is being used. You can affect, you know, with a, a wood grain, it'll sound one way. If you push the other way and you get this more glossy black. Really, and, and the entire room, or most of the room, is covered in, in these uh, louvered yeah. panels. But um, also for videos, it's a beautiful to reflect light off. It's a part of our look. Yeah. As I look at our large HEPA filter here, I'm reminded by part of what works well for us having these large rooms and these iconic rooms and these desirable rooms is the fact that you can fit, uh, in this room alone, pre-COVID, you would put how many? 45. 40, 45. Uh, a 45-piece or orchestra in here. Mm. Times have changed now, and we need more space for social distancing. So where there was 45, now we can probably do 15, 16 in here. Yeah. Then we can add more with the ISO booths and different areas around. But because the desire to uh, have orchestras and more players, the, the wall between Studio A and Studio B can be removed. And what we actually now are doing is taking most of our sessions for Studio A and spilling them into the Studio B live room, which I'm now standing in. So we're able to bring the capacity of the sessions up quite a bit and can do nearly 30 folks, around 30 folks, in spread between these two rooms, Studio A and Studio B live. We have to be pretty creative and versatile. We have to use Zoom. We have to use our iPads to have everybody interact with each other. So, so far it's been working out good. So now, Paul and I are standing in Studio B. Coming from A, orchestra dates, big bands, the Beatles press conference, you, all, all that legendary work and performances done in there, you come into B, which is known as the Rock Room, used by... Popular for the Beach Boys, Surf and Safari, John Mayer, Beck, Green Day. Bob uh, Dylan had this yeah, room, Bob right? Bob Dylan, Goo Goo Dolls. So we have the, the rock room. We have the orchestra room. We have the ability to open them both up and take over both of these spaces. And it's also notable that we're set up here for a vocal session. And this microphone that's set up 
is, uh, is, is quite an important one, yeah, right, Paula? We lovingly call that the Frank mic. It was used by him and a lot of other artists. It's been around since the 40s, the mic. Um, it's really made in the 30s, but it's one of our many vintage collection of, of microphones, but Frank has used that mic. So you come to Capitol, you have Frank's mic, you have the Neve 8068 in Studio B, which we're going to go see in just a second because it's a pretty unique time to be able to see it. Mm -hmm. That mic, that Neve, the echo chambers under the, under the parking lot, the sound of these rooms, and you can really recreate that, that legendary Capitol sound. Yes. So why don't we go take a look inside Studio B because it's a pretty special time to be here and you'll see why in just a second. Yeah, this is uh, an unusual look, right, when you come into Studio B, for it to be like this, but there's a reason, right? Super cleaning. Yeah, we find uh, an opportunity here that we don't normally have yeah. because the studios are booked and usually so busy, but because of the distancing, the social distancing, we've really regularly opened Studio A and B live rooms up together using the control room in A. Yes. yes. And so this beloved... 8068 from the yep, 70s. Yep, from the 70s. That, that is uh, old and vintage. It needs to be clean so it won't make a lot of noises and pops and fizzes. That's and, right. Um, yeah. Originally, we had the 32-track Neve, and uh, we bought another 24-channel Neve and put them together, and it was a happy marriage. So this started out smaller and is also rumored to be serial number one. Yeah, I believe right? so. Mm -hmm. And if you take a look over there, you'll see uh, a whole bunch of signatures, including yeah. Al Schmidt. Who Al else's Schmidt, names are up Jeff there? Jeff Emmerich, uh, Andy Johns, Eddie Kramer, Phil Ramone. So no yeah. slouches. Yeah. <laughs> Some heavyweights. And this, this console has been in use for over 40 years. Yeah. And having this opportunity now mm. to pull out the modules and really put the Replace. deep the deep maintenance that's needed to be done in here yeah. means we can get another 40 something years yeah. out of this right hopefully yeah, um, yeah this console will outlive all of us <laughs> that's right i mean it's also worth noting on the talkback mic uh there's a tiny <laughs> tiny darth vader and it was left here by john mayer by john, john mayer. mayer camped out here for a few months and uh wanted to get inspired and then ended up saying to record the record so we've done a lot of full yeah records here. This is our nice rock and roll tracking room. And when Paula says he was camped out here for six months, yeah. she means camped out because he brought a teepee, right? Yeah, he brought uh, wall hangings and, you know, I think 50 guitars. They were all out. <laughs> so looking around, there's all this amazing legacy equipment that mm. folks want to come here and work with. And part of that reason is because, listen, in LA, there's lots of studios with cool old stuff. Yeah but we really have the reputation of our cool old stuff works as opposed to like, well, don't touch that fader and that knob's kind of buzzy and forget this whole section over here. People always tell us that they love coming here because everything works. Yeah. And you have the analog side from the tape machine over here to the 8068, to the classic microphones, the sound of the rooms, the echo chambers, it all comes together. Yeah. And then if you just turn over a little bit, you can be working in the box, in Pro Tools, yep. latest plugins, and really have the best of both worlds. Best of both, both worlds. The classic analog side mm -hmm. and the digital side, right? Yep, yep, we can do both. Also venturing into immersive sound technology. Yeah, that's, Adobe. that's right. So for about three years, in fact, we should head to Studio C to see it. Mm. But for about three years now, we've been mixing music in Dolby Atmos. It's been so busy that we built a second immersive mixing room on the second floor. Mm -hmm. And we're real busy with that, right? Yeah, yeah we just did the Trent Reznor Atticus uh, Ross project. For, for Nine Inch Nails, we did uh, Bob Marley. Yeah. Billie Eilish is No Time to Die, we mixed in yeah. Atmos in there. Mm -hmm. Rock and Roll Circus, you know. The Rolling Stones. Yeah. And a lot of the Universal Catalog. 
But Studio C is really notable because it's always been this great mixing room. Right. And we I'd say... We could do say, both now, you know? And in fact, we have Al Schmidt and Nico Bolas mixing um, a new record for an artist. And they're in there right they're now. They're in there right now, yeah. Are they going to be okay with us yeah, interrupting? Yeah, well, Al's our number one um, favorite guy, along with Nico. But um, Al has... Uh, Uncle Al is... is will do anything for us. He's wonderful. Well, we're, we're lucky to have him, so uh, we'll see if we yeah. can bust in on Al Schmidt and Nico Bolas working in Studio C. Oh, well, hello. Hola. Hey, guys. Hi, Al. Hi, Nico. How are you guys? What are you doing? It's wonderful we to see you. We brought a camera. You too. Oh, fantastic. Well, thanks for letting us bust in on you guys sure. while you're working. But it's also great because we're showing folks around the studio a little bit and having the two of you here to yeah, no, uh, absolutely to help tell the story is really helpful. Are we allowed My to favorite. say what you're working on? Do we know? Are yeah, we? it's Willie Nelson. We love working here. Having a this good is time. Studio C. Mixing. If you've never been to Studio C before, mixing Willie Nelson. also known as the house that Al built. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, since we have you two uh, frequent offenders here, uh, right. what's what's the thing for the two of you that that makes you want to keep coming back? To well, it's well, easy. Number one is Paula. Oh. Yeah. That's just one of the main Thank reasons. You, well, I love uh, you. We love Paula, and uh, she always seems to make things work for us. It's always easy. And, and she figures things easy. out that you never think are going to get figured out, <laughs> and she does it. You make and it then easy. And on top of that, yeah. it's true. We have the illustrious Capitol Studios. I mean, I don't know. Anything that sounds better. And we mix here all the time, and it's just a comfortable place. We get to know everybody. It's like home. It's like a second home. And my wife says, Paula is my studio wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the best part studio. about Capitol is the sound of the rooms. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what you do anywhere in the room, if you clap a hand or play a horn, it sounds good. <laughs> the <laughs> other thing makes it easy. is the maintenance. Yeah. They right. have a great maintenance crew. If something goes wrong, it's only wrong for a couple of minutes. That's right. I've been to places where something goes wrong, Days you got a ahead. half hour down. Yeah. Here, that never happens. No. I've never had that kind of a breakdown here. There's no yeah. downtime. We are content. Yeah. Nice. Well, we are very lucky to have you. Well, yes, yeah. you are. Oh, we're also, we well, I know, you keep telling me. <laughs> yeah. And we're also very lucky, as we know, to have Paula. Oh, and my. So, speaking of So, this of which, is the 10th time Paula has celebrated three years <laughs> in the Capitol. Well, it. We have something for you. Yeah, what are you, you doing? What? By the way. Oh, that, yes. I, I would take a hug. Oh! No, to no, that no, end. no, no, no. First, we oh, have a wow. giant balloon. Oh, my goodness, yes. You'll float that away. That is so funny. So much to dance with. And then we got oh. one for me, oh. one for Mal. Oh, my God. And one from Rowie. Oh, my God. Oh, thank you. I'd like to thank <laughs> Al Smith, Somebody Nico should get a picture of this. to all the men I love. There you go, Paula. God, I'm like Happy Miss America. I'm Miss Capital. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I, I'm so honored. You know, Al, I, I, I love you. I love you, Nico. Oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed. Well, it's, it's weird to, to I not hug. I don't know what to say. Yes. I know, this is hugging me. Yeah. You're, you're hugging me virtual through plants. Like I said, I wouldn't have been able to make it without seeing you guys every day and making me laugh. What could be better? Oh, this is great. Right here. I'm smiling under this. <laughs> me too. <laughs>